friends today I would talk about DNA sequencing and analysis. After learning this module you shall be able to understand DNA sequencing, method of DNA sequencing and DNA sequence analysis. In the year 1953 James Watson and Francis Crick put forward their double standard model of DNA based on crystallized X-ray structure studied by Rosalind Franklin. According to the model, DNA is composed of two strands of nucleotide coiled around each other linked together by hydrogen bond and running in opposite direction. Each strand is composed of four complementary nucleotides namely adenine, cytosine, guanine and thymine with A always adenine, A stands for adenine, A always paired with thymine and C always paired with guanine. The order of these bases A, T, G, C along DNA contains the complete set of instruction that make the genetic inheritance. Defining the arrangement of these nucleotide bases ATGC in DNA strand is a primary step in assessing regulatory sequences, coding and non-coding regions. The term DNA sequencing refers to method for determining the order of these nucleotides bases ATGC in molecule of DNA. The foundation for sequencing protein was first laid by work of Fred Sanger who by 1955 had completed the sequence of all the amino acids in insulin, a small protein secreted by pancreas. The first method for determining DNA sequences involving a location specific primer extension strategy was developed by Ray Wu at Cornell University in 1970. Between 1970 and 73, Wu and R. Padmanabham and their colleagues demonstrated that this method could be implied to determine any DNA sequence using synthetic location specific primer. Frederick Sanger then adopted this primer extension strategy to develop more rapid DNA sequencing method at MRC Center, Cambridge, UK and published the method for DNA sequencing with chain terminating inhibitors in 1977. Simultaneously during 1976 and 77, Walter Gilbert and Alan Maxim at Harvard also developed sequencing method including one for DNA sequencing by chemical degradation analysis. The knowledge of DNA sequences of gene and other part of the genome of organism has become indispensable for several applied and research fields such as diagnostic, biotechnology, forensic biology, biological systematics, taxonomy, phylogeny, ecology and genetic studies. Advancements in sequencing were aided by concurrent development of recombinant DNA technology allowing DNA sample to be isolated from sources other than viruses. The development of dye based sequencing method with automated analysis, DNA sequencing has become easier and faster. The rapid speed of sequencing attained with modern DNA sequencing technology has been instrumental in sequencing of human genome in the human genome project. Developments in DNA sequencing technologies can be grouped into three stages. First generation sequencing, second generation sequencing and third generation sequencing which include emerging technologies. The Sanger and Gilbert method of sequencing DNA are often called first generation sequencing because they were the first to be developed. 
in the late 1990s new methods called second generation sequencing methods that were faster and cheaper began to be developed. The most popular widely used second generation sequencing method was one called pyro sequencing. Today a number of newer sequencing methods are available and others are in process of being developed. These are often called third generation or next generation sequencing method. Now we talk about first generation sequencing methods. In this the first is Maxim Gilbert sequencing method. In the year 1976 and 77 Alan Maxim and Walter Gilbert developed a DNA sequencing method based on chemical modification of DNA and subsequent cleavage at specific basis. The method requires radioactive labeling at one end and purification of the DNA fragment to be sequenced. The chemical treatment generates breaks at a small proportions of one or two of the four nucleotide base in each of the four reactions. Thus a series of labeled fragments is generated from the radio labeled end to the first cut site in each molecule. The fragments of four reactions are arranged side by side in gel electrophoresis for site separation. To visualize the fragments the gel is exposed to X-ray film for auto radiography yielding a series of dark band each corresponding to a radio labeled DNA fragment from which sequence may be inferred. It was the first widely adopted method for DNA sequencing. However, it is no longer in widespread use due to its technical complexity prohibiting its use in standard molecular biology kits. Extensive use of hazardous chemicals and difficulties with scale up. Hence this method has been supplanted by next generation sequencing methods. The another method is Sanger sequencing method. Frederick Sanger developed several faster more efficient techniques to sequence DNA. Indeed Sanger's work in this area was so groundbreaking that he got the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1980. The two key methods developed by Sanger are called chain termination and die terminator sequencing. Over the next several decades technical advances automated and dramatically sped up the further refinement of Sanger sequencing process. Another method developed by Sanger is the chain termination or die deoxy method. The chain termination method requires a single standard DNA template, a DNA primer, a DNA polymerase, radioactively or fluorescently labeled nucleotides and modified nucleotides that terminate DNA strand elongation. The DNA sample is divided into four separate sequencing reactions containing all four of the standard deoxynucleotides and the DNA polymerase. To each reaction is added only one of the four dideoxynucleotide which are the chain terminating nucleotides lacking a 3 prime OH group required for the formation of phosphodiester bond between two nucleotides thus terminating DNA strand extension and resulting in DNA fragments of varying length. The newly synthesized and labeled DNA fragments are heat denatured and separated by size using gel electrophoresis on a denaturing polyacrylamide urea gel with each of the four reactions run in one of the four individual lanes 
The DNA bands are then visualized by autoradiography or UV light and the DNA sequence can be directly read off the X-ray film or gel image. The dark band in lane indicate a DNA fragment that is result of chain termination after incorporation of a dideoxynucleotide. The relative position of the different band among the four lane are then used to read from bottom to top the DNA sequence. The technical variation of chain termination sequence include tagging each dideoxynucleotide with fluorescent dye. Dideoxynucleotides are similar to regular or deoxynucleotides, but with one key difference that they lack hydroxyl group on 3 prime carbon of the sugar ring. In the in a regular nucleotide, the 3 prime hydroxyl group acts as a hook allowing a new nucleotide to be added to an existing chain. Once a dideoxynucleotide has been added to the chain, there is no hydroxyl available and no further nucleotide can be added. The chain ends with dideoxynucleotide which is marked with a particular color of dye depending on the base A, T, G or C that it carries. Next method is dye terminator sequencing. Dye terminator sequencing utilizes labeling of the chain terminator dideoxynucleotides which permit sequencing in a single reaction rather than using four reactions as in labeled primer method. In dye terminator sequencing each of the four dideoxynucleotide chain terminator is labeled with fluorescent dyes each of which with different wavelength of fluorescence and emission. Fluorescent labeled dideoxynucleotide generate DNA fragments that terminate at each nucleotide along the template strand. The DNA is separated by capillary electrophoresis on the basis of size. From the order of fragment formed, the DNA sequence can be read. Smallest fragments were terminated earliest and they come out of the column first. So, the order in which the different fluorescent tags exist in the column is also the sequence of the strand. The DNA sequence readout is shown on an electrophorogram that is generated by laser scanner. Another method is shotgun sequencing. The technique is named by the analogy with rapidly expanding quasi random firing pattern of shotgun. In shotgun sequencing, multiple copies of the same chromosome are isolated and fragmented in random location. It, all the fragments are sequenced. The sequences obtained are compared to find out the overlapping end of the fragments. Hence, complete sequence of the original DNA from one end to another is assembled. Now we come to second generation sequencing techniques. The key feature of second generation sequencing methodologies is parallelization of high number of sequencing reactions achieved by miniaturization of sequencing reactions. Highly improved detection system, reduction in cost and sequencing time to hours. Some of the second generation sequencing techniques are pyro sequencing. In this method, the DNA is amplified inside water droplets in an oil solution which is called emulsion PCR. With each droplet containing a single DNA template attached to a single primer coated bead that then forms a clonal colony. The sequencing machine contains many picoliter volume wells 
each containing a single bead and sequencing enzyme. Pyrosequencing uses luciferase to generate light for detection of individual nucleotide added to nascent DNA and the combined data are used to generate sequence readouts. Another method is Illumina Solexa sequencing. Solexa company developed this sequencing technology based on dye terminators in this DNA molecule are first attached to primers on a slide and amplified. This is known as bridge amplification. The DNA can only be extended one nucleotide at a time. A camera takes images of the fluorescently labeled nucleotides, then the dye along with the terminal 3 prime blocker is chemically removed from the DNA allowing the next cycle. Another method is solid sequencing. It is based on sequencing by oligonucleotide ligation. In short, it is called SBL and detection. Template of DNA is fragmented. Two different adapters are attached to the termini of the fragments and then fragments are mixed with excess of beads for PCR. After PCR, the beads are deposited on a glass slide and bases are read by probing the beads with mixture of 5 prime fluorescently labeled probes. Another method is helioscope single molecule sequencing. Helioscope sequencing uses DNA fragments with added poly A tail adapter which are attached to the flow cell surface. The next step involves extension based sequencing with cyclic washes of the flow cell with fluorescently labeled nucleotide. Now we come to third generation sequencing or emerging technologies for sequencing of uh, DNA. In this, the first method is single molecule sequencing. In short, it is called SMRT. SMRT or single molecule sequencing is based on the sequencing by synthesis approach. It, the DNA is synthesized in so called zero mode waveguides, small well like container with the capturing tools located at the bottom of the well. The sequencing is performed with use of unmodified polymerase and fluorescently labeled nucleotide flowing freely in the solution. The fluorescent label is detached from the nucleotide at its incorporation into DNA strand leaving the unmodified DNA strand. The SMRT technology allows detection of nucleotide modification. This happens through the observation of polymerase kinetics. This approach allows reads of 1000 nucleotides. Another technique is DNA nanoball sequencing. It is highly throughput sequencing technology that is used to determine the entire genomic sequence of an organism. The method uses rolling circle replication to amplify fragments of genomic DNA molecule. This DNA sequencing allows large number of DNA nanoballs to be sequenced per run and at low reagent cost compared to other next generation sequencing platforms. Another technique is nanopore sequencing. Nanopores are formed by pore forming proteins. Conductivity of the pore for the ion current changes when the pore is blocked by strand of nucleic acid passing through the pore. Flow of ion current depends on the shape of molecule passing through the pore. Since nucleotide have different shapes, they are recognized due to the change of ionic current, this technique can sequence single molecule. Another technique is 
ion torrent sequencing. In this technique, a chip with ion sensitive field effect transistor sensor capable of detecting individual protons is used. Beads containing template DNA are deposited into wells of, of the chip. The chip is sequentially flashed with individual DNTPs. Integration of nucleotide releases hydrogen ion which changes pH of the solution. The change in pH is detected by the sensor at the bottom of the well. This is converted into electronic signal which is recorded by the system. In conclusion, it can be said that Sanger sequencing is still considered to be the gold standard of sequencing due to its accuracy and read length. Automated Sanger sequencing still produces the longest reads. However, it is slow and expensive technique while the second and third generation technologies are faster and cost effective. The key problem of these technologies are accuracy and short reads which makes final assembly or alignment difficult and computationally challenging. Therefore, the choice of the technology depends on the required application and advantages and disadvantages of the particular sequencing approach. Now, after doing sequencing, how we can analyze the sequencing data? The sequence analysis is the process of subjecting a DNA or RNA or peptide sequence to any of a wide range of analytical method to understand its feature, function, structure and evolution. Methodologies used include sequence alignment, searches against biological databases and others. Sequence analysis can be used to assign function to gene and protein by the study of similarities between the compared sequences. Nowadays, there are many tools and techniques that provide the sequence comparison or sequence alignment and analyze the alignment product to understand its biology. Sequence analysis in molecular biology includes a very wide range of relevant topics. Number one, the comparison of sequences in order to find similarity, often to infer if they are related or homologous. Identification of intrinsic features of the sequence such as active sites, post additional modification sites, gene structures, reading frames, distribution of introns and exon and regulatory elements. And number three, identification of sequence differences and variations such as point mutations and sequence nucleotide polymorphism in order to get genetic marker and also revealing the evolution and genetic diversity of sequences and organism and number five the identification of molecular structure from sequence alone. According to Michael Levitt, sequence analysis was born during the period from 1969 to 1977. In 1969, the analysis of sequences of transfer RNAs were used to infer residue interaction from co-related changes in nucleotide sequences giving rise to a model of transfer RNA secondary structure. In 1970, Sol B. Needleman and Christian D. Wunsch published the first computer algorithm for aligning two sequences. If there are millions of protein and nucleotide sequences known. These sequences fall into many groups of related sequences known as protein families or gene families. Relationship between these sequences are usually determined by aligning them together and assigning this alignment a score. 
there are two main type of sequence alignment, pairwise sequence alignment which only compares two sequences at a time and multiple sequence alignment which compare many sequences in one go. A common use for pairwise sequence alignment is to take a sequence of interest and compare it to all known sequences in a database to identify homologous sequences. In general, the matches in the database are ordered to show the most closely related sequences first followed by sequences with diminishing similarities. It, the sequence assembly refers to the reconstruction of a DNA sequence by aligning and merging small DNA fragments. It is an integral part of modern DNA sequencing. Since presently available DNA sequencing technologies are ill suited for reading long sequences, large pieces of DNA such as genome are often sequenced by cutting the DNA into small pieces, reading the small fragments and reconstituting the original DNA by merging the information on various fragments as shown in this diagram. The sample sequence shows how a sequence assembler would take fragments and match by overlap. The image also shows the potential problem of repeats in sequence. The initial characterization of any new DNA or protein sequence starts with a database search aimed at finding out whether homologues of this gene or protein are already available and if they are, what is known about them. Looking for exactly the same sequence is quite straightforward. One can just take the first letter of the query sequence, search for its first occurrence in the database and then check if the second letter of the query is the same in the subject. If it is indeed the same, the program could check the third letter and then the fourth and continues this comparison to the end of the query. If the second letter in the subject is different from the second letter in the query, the program should search for another occurrence of the first letter and so on. This will identify all the sequences in the database that are identical to query sequence or include it. it of course, this approach is primitive computation wise and there are sophisticated algorithm for text matching that do it much more efficiently. In the example shown above, we looked only for sequences that exactly match the query. The algorithm would not even find a sequence that is identical to query with exception of the first letter. To find such sequences, the same analysis should be conducted with the fragment starting from the second letter of the original query and then from the third one and so on. In summary, we can say that in 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick put forward their double helix model of DNA according to which DNA is composed of two strands of nucleotide coiled around each other, linked together by hydrogen bond and running in opposite directions. Each strand is composed of four complementary nucleotide adenine, cytosine, guanine and thymine. DNA sequencing is the determination of precise sequence of nucleotide in a sample of DNA. There are two classical methods of sequencing. One is Sanger sequencing and another is Maxim Gilbert sequencing. In 1977, Fred Sanger published a method for DNA sequencing with chain terminating inhibitor and simultaneously during 1976 and 77, Walter Gilbert and Alan Maxim at Harvard also developed sequencing method including one for DNA sequencing by chemical degradation analysis. 
Sanger and Gilbert method of sequencing DNA are often called first generation sequencing because they were the first to be developed. But in the late 1990s, new methods called second generation sequencing method that were faster and cheaper began to be developed. The most popular, widely used second generation sequencing method was one called pyrosequencing. Today, a number of newer sequencing methods are available and others are in the process of being developed. These are often called third generation or next generation sequencing method. Sanger sequencing method is still considered to be the gold standard of sequencing due to its accuracy and read length. Automatic Sanger sequencing still produces the longest reads, however, it is slow and expensive while the second and third generation technologies are faster and cost effective. The key problem of these technologies are accuracy and short reads which makes final assembly or alignment difficult and computationally challenging. Therefore, the choice of the technology depends on the required application and advantages and disadvantages of the particular sequencing approach. Sequence analysis was born during 1969 and 1977. It is the process of subjecting DNA RNA or peptide sequence to any of a wide range of analytical methods to understand its feature, function, structure or evolution. Methodologies used include sequence alignment, searches against biological databases and others. Sequence analysis can be used to assign function to genes and proteins by the study of similarities between the compared sequences. Nowadays, there are many tools and techniques that provide the sequence comparison or sequence alignment and analyze the alignment product to understand its biology. Thank you.